Welcome back to my channel. My name is Edson. Today, I want to show you how we can build a PDF to audio converter. Let's jump into the demo and show you the application that we're trying to build. This is the application that we're trying to build. By the way, I use the number of dependencies to come up with this kind of application. So here is our application PDF to audio converter. And this is the description of the application. This area right here, this is where you're going to drag and drop or you can click to upload your PDF file. So let's go ahead and click here. And then we're going to look for the PDF that we want to convert into audio. So I have simple text right here. Let me click on that and then open. And then you will see your PDF uploaded right right here is 28.1 kilobytes here we have a drop down to select a speaker i'm going to go with p227 we can go ahead and submit and you can see here on the right side our audio is being generated okay yeah so it has finished generating the audio from the pdf file and so now we can listen to our audio in this tutorial i will show you how to build an application that converts pdf to audio using text speech ai and gradier if you found this video helpful don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more python tutorials let me know in the comments what topic you'd like to learn next thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video Okay, so once you're satisfied you can go ahead and download this audio right here so i can click on this download button and you can save your audio by the way this is the pdf that we have generated the audio for okay so we have a number of dependencies that we need to install before we start building our project we need to confirm whether we have python installed on our computers or not you want to search for terminal or command prompt any one of these will do let me just go with command prompt before we check for the python version we need to confirm with our dependencies which python version is compatible with those dependencies so i'm going to go to my tts and so let me confirm with the version of python that is compatible it says it's compatible with version 3.9 and anything less than 3.12 okay, let's go to gradio this is compatible with python version 3.10 and above and so that means 3.1 would do for us to check for the python version that you have on your computer you can run pi or python or Python 3 or Pi 3. One of these commands is supposed to work for you. Pi dash dash version will work for me, I'm sure. And you can see I have 3.126, which might not be compatible. So I need maybe 3.10. So this is the version that I'm going to download and install my computer. It's possible to install multiple versions of Python on your computer. Head over to the official website of Python, which is python.org. Go ahead and do the installation of Python 3.10. It's quite straightforward. Okay, once you have that, then we are ready to move to the next step. The next step is we're going to create our project folder. So on my desktop, I'm going to write clean and i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to name it tutorial underscore pdf underscore audio but you can name it whatever you want i can open this folder in any text editor of my choice but i'm going to recommend visual studio code because visual studio code comes with an inbuilt terminal that we can use if you do not have visual studio code already installed you can go to this website right here this is the official website code.visualstudio.com forward slash download and you can download the one for your platform once you're done we want to open our project folder in visual studio code and so there are three options you can right click and go to show more options and then you can see this option right here open with code the other one is just right click and then open in terminal and then you run this command right here code space dot this is going to open our folder in visual studio code you can see our folder right here you could also go to file and then open folder and then you can go ahead and open this folder in visual studio code after we have this open in visual studio code then we can go ahead and open the terminal to open the terminal you can go up here go to view then terminal down here or you can use this icon right here or you can press ctrl j to open the terminal once i have my terminal open i want to create what we call a virtual environment so a virtual environment is a separate Separate environment that I can install my dependencies which I have more control over if I mess things up I can just destroy that environment and that's not going to mess up with my global environment for us to create a virtual environment we need to use another module so we're going to install that module it install virtual env run this command if you already have virtual environment installed you see this requirement already satisfied but if you do not it will run through the installation once we have virtual env installed now we can create our virtual environment to create our virtual environment using virtual env we can just run virtual env and then we pass this dash p flag and then we go and look for the version of python that we want to use to create this virtual environment for me i want to use python 
3.10, which is this one. The reason why I'm using virtual ENV is because I want to use a different version from the one that is running in my global environment. And so I'm using 3.1 to create this specific environment. I'll have to look for this executable right here, open file location. You can see the executable right here. So you want to go to this address bar right here. You can click inside this address bar, control C or you can right click the executable right here and go to properties and you can copy the target. It's the same as the one in the address bar. It's already selected. You can also press control C and then press OK and then OK. After the P, you can then paste that control V to paste the path to that Python executable. And then after that, you can then name your virtual environment. I want to name it dot V E N V. You can name it whatever you want. And so I'm going to go ahead and create this virtual environment is done and let me create this you can see now in our project we have a new folder right here this is our virtual environment this is where we're going to be installing our dependencies for this project for us to be able to install dependencies into this virtual environment we need to activate it on windows we can use the name of the virtual environment dot vnv backward slash scripts backward slash uh, if you hit enter, you're supposed to be in the virtual environment. So you can see here the prefix to the path. This tells us that we are now in our virtual environment. If you are on a Linux or Mac OS, you need to write this source. The name of the virtual environment in this case is .venv forward slash bin forward slash activate like this. If you want to deactivate this, you can just run deactivate like that you can see now we no longer have that prefix on our path but we want to activate it activate and then now our virtual environment is activated we're going to install a number of dependencies in this virtual environment our tts library called tts we just run this command pip install tts so pip install capital letter tts like that and let's go ahead this usually takes a lot of time i'll be back once this is finished There are so many other dependencies that come along with the TTS installation. You can see Flask, Torch, Pandas, Matplotlib. Okay, so it looks like we're done. So I'm going to clear this. Let's go ahead and install other dependencies. The second one is Gradio. So to install Gradio, we can run this command right here, pip install Gradio. If you already have Gradio installed, you can run the upgrade. Let me do that. Pip install radio let's run that command looks like it's done as well and then our third dependency is the one that we're going to read into our pdf file so it's right here pi pdf2 so to install pi pdf2 you can see right here it says pip install pi pdf2 let's run that command install pi pdf in all uppercase to run that that was quite easy and so we are done with the installation of all our dependencies so we can confirm the installation of tts by running this command right here tts dash dash list model so let me do that tts dash dash list underscore model okay run that these commands take a little bit of time and so you need to be patient and wait there we go, we have our model. I'm going to work with uh, model 21. It's the one that I used for my previous project as well. So I'm going to work with this one. So now we can go ahead and create our project. And so inside the main project, I'm going to create a file. I'm going to name it main.py. You can name it whatever you want. We need to import torch. And after we import torch, we import TTS from TTS in all uppercase.api, import TTS in all uppercase like that. And then we create what we call a device, which is going to determine whether we're going to use our GPU or CPU. So we can call it device, but you can name it whatever you want. And then here we say CUDA, if torch, which is this torch that we imported right here, dot CUDA, dot is underscore available, else we're going to use our CPU in quotation marks like that. So we need to create the main function, which we're going to use with our Gradio. So we can define here, we can call this function whatever we want. I'm going to name it PDF underscore to underscore audio. And then this function will take in a number of arguments. The first one is going to be the path to our PDF, it's going to be PDF path. And then it's going to take the speaker as well. By default, I'm going to call this P225. It's because of the model that we're using. We need the output underscore path 
the output path is the audio file that we're going to generate. So I'm going to name it output dot wave. Here we're going to read our PDF document and then we convert it into audio. So for us to be able to read our document, I'm going to consult with the documentation. So let me go to Pi PDF right here. You can see the usage right here. By the way, I'm going to leave all these links in the description. So you can see here, Pi PDF, we need to import PDF reader right here. Then we create a reader object. And then we can extract the pages. Then we can extract text. So let me go ahead and do this. So up here, we need to import the PDF reader. So we can say from Pi PDF 2. So we need to import PDF reader. So we're going to create our reader object right here. Capital letter P, PDF reader. And then inside here, we pass in the path to the PDF. PDF underscore path. So that's why we had to pass this PDF path up here. We can read into the pages of this reader object. So this reader object has a reader dot pages property. This will return some kind of a list. And then we can look through these pages. So we can say for page in reader dot pages, we're going to create a text variable, which we're going to assign to an empty string text plus equal to each page dot extract text because we're going to extract text from each page right here and then we append it to this text we can use this text in our tts we can create our tts object we can create a variable called tts you can name it whatever you want and then we use our tts which is this tts up here and this tts takes in the model that we want to use and so let me list those models again tts dash dash list models as i said i'm using 21 so let me see it's right here you can copy this line right here copy that and that's the one that we're going to use inside here in quotation marks and then you paste that dot two and then we can pass in the device in there which is this device that we created up here we can convert this to audio this tts model dot tts underscore to underscore file and then inside here we pass in the text so the text that we are trying to read into is this text right here that we created so text equals to text by the way this variable can be anything it could be my underscore text here my underscore text which means this is going to be my underscore text so this thing right here is this variable right here we also need a speaker we're going to grab our speaker from this right here so it's going to be speaker so we also need an output path file underscore path is output path like that here we can then return our output path which is this path right here we're done with our function this function is going to convert our pdf into audio we can now create our user interface which is our gradio i'll call it interface but you can name it whatever you want but we need to import our gradio up here import gradio sgr i'm getting this from the documentation let's check with the documentation so you can import Gradio as GR right here. You can create an interface. Here they called it demo, but I'm calling it interface. Well, our interface is going to be GR, which is this GR right here. We can say GR dot capital letter I interface. This takes in a number of arguments. So let me put it on separate lines so that it's readable. The first one is the function, which is fn. Our function is going to be this PDF to audio. So let me just control C and copy this and then paste it right here. We are not calling this function right here. There is no need for you to put those parentheses. So after we specify the function, we have to specify our inputs to this interface. I'm going to create a list because we have two inputs, gr.file. You can create a file component in Gradio for your file uploads. By the way, this is in the documentation. You can look at the components here. It says 30 built-in components. Let me click on that so that I can show you what I'm doing right here. So we're looking at this file component right here. So this file component can take in a value, a label, etc. But in this case, we just need a label. So we're going to say label is going to be upload a PDF file. And then the second input, gr dot drop down. And so our drop down will take in choices. You can see there are choices right here. You can pass in a value and you can pass in a label. Choices, and this is going to be a list of choices. So this is going to be our speakers. So I will say P225 
ผมอะ in quotation marks p two two s i p two two seven p two two eight okay like that let me take these four you can also pass in the default value value is going to be p two two five and you can also pass in a label so let's just say select Peter right here now, after we do with our inputs we have to do outputs. Remember, it's in plural like this: inputs, outputs. Our output is gear dot audio. There is an audio component. The audio is right here, and we can pass in the label right here. Output audio. After the outputs, then we can specify the title of our radio interface: PDF to audio converter. We also need to pass in the description. Write whatever description you want. So I can say convert all your PDFs to audio using PTS. Once we have finished all this, then we can launch our interface, which is this thing right here. So down here, we can say interface. Dot launch. We can call the launch function. We can save this, and then we can run our interface. So let me run this Python main dot py. Let's run this and see whether it's going to work or not. It's running on local URL. It's followed this link. Let me click on this link. Now it looks like it's open. You can see right here. So let's try and generate our audio from PDF. So let me click right here to upload. Simple text. Open. And let's look at our drop down right here. I'm going to go with P228 right here. Let me select that, then submit. Okay, yeah, so we have our output audio right here. Let's play and hear our audio. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build an application that converts PDF to audio using text, speech, AI, and Gradio. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Python tutorials. Let me know in the comments what topic you'd like to learn next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. If you are satisfied with this audio, you can go ahead and download it. You can name your file, and then you can click save. I hope this was helpful. If you find the video helpful, you can leave a like. You can also consider subscribing to the channel. I hope to see you in my next tutorial. For now, I'm out. Cheers.